Welcome to lecture 12 of our series on prosody. Here we'll cover a few things that prosody does relating to linguistic structures, for example, marking phrasing and boundaries. We'll start by talking about constituency structure. Constituents like prepositional phrases are the building blocks of sentences. For example, above that we might have VP, verb phrases, S for sentence, and P for noun phrase. However, the groupings seen here, the syntactic groupings, are not really respected by prosody. So for example, in spoken English, I could probably say something like, I don't want to go to school. Where wanna comes from want to, which is not a constituent, but gets grouped by the prosody. So prosody uses different groupings. Some analysts describe these as forming prosodic words or prosodic phrases. Some researchers have sought to go a little further to describe prosodic structures, sort of hierarchical structures like parse trees, but I think today most agree that there are better ways to describe these phenomena. Now prosody can also disambiguate things that are, just in terms of the words, ambiguous. So consider this example. Do you see the ambiguity? Take your time. Right, well in spoken English there is no ambiguity. So I can say, when you learn, gradually you learn more. Or when you learn gradually, you worry more. Two ways to describe the difference. We can say there's a difference in boundary location, here or possibly here. And prosody is, of course, good at marking boundaries. Pause length is a big part of it, but not all. Another way to describe this is in terms of a difference in phrasing. Prosody has a role that way too. A lack of pauses within a phrase is a big part of identifying something as a phrase, but there's more. Uh, very saliently, uh, pitch declination and reset are involved. The pitch contours I'm showing here are very conceptual, but they do indicate that people tend to start high and then low, and there's a bit of a reset. So if you're starting a new phrase, you mark the new phrase by going up a little bit. If they're related phrases, the reset may be small. If it's a brand new topic, the pitch might start much, much higher. Also, final lengthening is common. Okay, so phrasing and boundaries. However, not all boundaries are the same. Consider the famous example, eats, shoots, and leaves, versus eats, shoots, and leaves. All right. So there's a little comma there, and it's tempting to say, aha, well, there's a comma, it's a boundary, it's different. But actually a lot more is going on here. Uh, there's not just any kind of break. There's actually list intonation, which is its own thing. Not all commas are the same. Okay, be that as it may, across languages, many of the same factors are involved in phrasing and boundary marking. Uh, pitch reset, declination, and final lengthening. Another thing that's expressed similarly in many languages is prominence. Often in writing, this is represented by choice of font, bolding, capitals. In different cases, this can reflect things like contrast, narrow focus, new information, or emphasis for any other reason. These are not all exactly the same semantically, and the prosody is a little bit different also, but there is a common element of, of prominence. Um, and this is conveyed similarly across many languages. So for example, consider the properties of focus in Mandarin. These include on the focus token, uh, elevated pitch height, expanded pitch range. Whatever the tone is, it tends to be more clearly articulated. After the focus syllable, the pitch tends to be lower for a couple words, and the pitch range is compressed. English, pretty much the same but not all languages. So for example, post-focus compression uh, is certainly not universal. Okay, well, we've seen some ways in which prosody relates to linguistic structures. This wraps up our first three lectures on the functions of prosody. We'll come back and talk about more functions later. But our next topic will be representations, ways to diagram, stylize, visualize, and represent various prosodic properties and patterns.